Arrow's multitasking father, John Diggle. And New York City Mayor, Carter Poole on Blue Bloods. Please give a Phoenix Comic Con Fan Fest welcome to the very talented and busy Mr. David Ramsey. Super Bowl coming here to uh yeah. Yeah. this building too, right? It's gonna be great. Uh, no, you're gonna wait. visit the 50 yard line and Oh yes, it's gonna be awesome. Alright. Okay. Hey so Phoenix, what's happening? So if anyone didn't see the mid-season finale, you should not be here right now. <laughs> Did everyone see it? Yeah. Yeah, you thought we were gonna hold back, didn't you? In all the episodes that you've had so far, for you, what has been the most shocking turn of events that you've had? Um, most shocking? Phoenix, what's up? <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, it's your show. All right, well, let's see. The most shocking turn of events? That's tough. There's been a lot of shockers. You know, Diggle saves, I think Diggle saves Oliver's life every other episode. It's a requirement. <laughs> um, but I won't be helping him in this one. No. <laughs> That's a good question, isn't it? Um, well, you know, the arrow hood is like the Batman cowl. Anyone can put it on. <laughs> Not, not quite really, no, not quite really. But kind of, I mean, it's ultimately, it's, it's um, you know, they have to finish the guy, so I mean, everyone knows, everything, everything's gonna work out. But it's, you know something, the first time I saw the, uh, the season, the uh, mid-season premiere, mid-season finale, was the same time you guys saw it, and I was just like, wow. <laughs> I mean, they, they just really, really went for it. I thought, I thought the fight would be more kind of involved a little bit. Um, you know what I mean? We just like a little bit more involved. I mean, he really made Oliver look whack. <laughs> I mean, it was just bad. It was like, like, it was like, you know, it was varsity against the worst JV team ever. <laughs> but um, and then he just didn't pull any punches. I mean, just right off a mountain. So yeah, I mean, it, it was brutal. It was brutal even for us. And and I mean, after Oliver, after Steven was done, he was like. It's gonna be killer, Dave. It's gonna be killer, man. And I'm like, well, don't tell me anything. I want to see it with everybody else. So it's great. I, I, I'm really glad they went for it. I don't think you want to hear me ask questions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try raising hands. And so when you ask a question, if you can stand up and speak very loudly. If we have problems, we do have a mic. But let's try the whole. Yeah, be bold. Be bold. So right here, right in front. There we go. Yeah, you know, that's a very good question. It, uh, Greg Rolanton, who created the show, uh, saw me on a show called Blue Bloods, right? Woo! And yeah, Blue Bloods is great. It's Tom Selleck, I got a great Tom Selleck story too, I'll tell you guys about it. It's, um, it's, uh, so he saw me on the show and, and, and they didn't want to pull the trigger. They didn't want to make me a regular yet. They had a lot of people on payroll and they didn't want to make me a regular. So he was like, hey, you want to you wanna come in and, um, and meet on, uh, on this, this show we're doing, DC show called The Green Arrow, and I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. And um, he said, well, listen, th there's not much to do with the pilot, but he becomes uh, a very integral part uh, of the team, of the vigilante team. And it really was just kind of me and him and some other people. And he was like, he's going to be the guy. And, and um, I was like, fine. But, you know, the show really, really needed publicity. And she was really a godsend, really, because, I mean, it was just me and Steven brooding. And <laughs> It was just, I'm gonna go kill him. 
No. <laughs> Thank God for Felicity. <laughs> she came and brought some light to the uh, to the foundry. Otherwise, it just would have been. You know. And and actually, I mean, to be honest with you, she she's just in terms of her personality, the character. Her character is kind of more of a fit for the for the Flash. To be honest with you, just in terms of how they write. But um, but she's needed more where, where she is on the earth. Thank God. It's great. Here's Tom Selleck's story. Here it goes. <laughs> now, for, 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 all, for all you youngsters, you may not know that Tom Selleck used to be a huge television star. <laughs> and, and he used to do this show in the 80s called Magnum P.I. And he was, he was tremendous. He's still big, but he was tremendous, tremendously large. And, um, and uh, so, so people, people know him for that show, basically, Magnum. So now he shares the, the limelight a bit on the show with Donnie Wahlberg, and they both are fantastic on the show. So now on the show, let me give you a little backstory. I play the mayor of New York. It's not a small time character, right? He's the mayor of New York. He's a liberal mayor, young liberal guy coming in, and he's shaking things up. Tom Selleck plays the older stalwart police commissioner. I'm his boss for all intents and purposes. So, so yeah, I know it's funny. So, um, <laughs> so in this particular scene, now we're shooting in Harlem in this particular scene right now. The whole, the whole show is shot all throughout New York, mostly Brooklyn. We're shooting this particular scene in, in Harlem. Now, in the scene, I'm, 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 standing, I'm standing up in front of this brownstone, and I, I'm wearing my, 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 my Mario overcoat, and I have this big, long speech. And back at the time, Tom Selleck had back surgery before this. He, he, was, he was gingerly walking because his back was really hurting. So before each scene, he would only come out right at his part. He was supposed to be out there in the crowd, but he, he will come out only when he has a line. So, he's not out yet. There's about 75 people, um, all mixed ethnicities. It looks like New York, right? So I'm talking, I'm doing my Mario stuff, and they're like, yeah, some spattering of all, some booze, you know, he's the mayor. Tom Selleck walks around the corner to come do his part. All of a sudden, I swear to God, 150, over 50 year old black women from every brownstone <laughs> runs out screaming, Man up! Man up! Screaming, right? And I'm like, I'm the man of New York. And they're screaming. He signs every single one of their autographs. And it's awesome. And I'm like, wow, the mustache still does it. For me. I can grow a mustache. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm like Tom Selleck, you ain't got a six pack though, but you ain't got a six pack. Sorry, sorry. So we're gonna hand There's your Selleck story. There you go. Yeah. It's a great Selleck story. So, uh, first of all, I just want to say, you know, congratulations on having a TV character become a comic book character. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Hey, listen, that, that's really because of you guys. That's really, you guys wrote in and they listen, they really listen to social media, so um, if you want John Stewart, yeah. <laughs> Let them know. But uh, I just wanted to ask you know, now that Diggle's suddenly unemployed, is he gonna work with Palmer? That's funny. Um. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna work for Palmer. Um, but you know, it's it's interesting because we, just getting a little bit to that point, there's a there's a lot of uh, stuff that's gonna come out. Because Oliver's going to be gone for a while, obviously. I mean, you know, if you saw the finale, <laughs> he's going to be gone for a while. And uh, I mean, but you will see him during the show because they have a very good storyline in terms of how what's going to happen and, and uh, how he uh, ultimately makes a return. And um, but during that time, Starling City will be under under the protection of the fragmented Team Arrow and um, the upcoming Black Canary. And, yeah. um, and um, they don't—they aren't quite sure what they want to do yet with Adam. 
but with the atom in terms, but, but, but uh, you guys saw the echo skeleton already, right? You saw it? Yeah. Wasn't that awesome? And um, so, yeah, but, but there'll be a, there's a lot of, what's funny, I got a little story about this too, I got stories, I'm full of stories. And, um, you know, when, when Steven left, because he left the founders, so we had to do like four or five whatever episodes, it was me uh, and Katie and Colin and Colton and Emily. And we're, we're in the foundry and we have, you know, and we're going out and fighting crime and we're by ourselves. So there was a real um, bonding period just with the four of us without Steven. So Steven now just recently came back. We're now shooting the episodes now, right? And, um, you know, this isn't a secret. He, you know, so he comes back and what's funny is there's a, there was a moment where me, Colton, and Emily are talking. And we've been doing what we've been doing for the past five episodes, we're just cracking jokes and banter and just, ha ha ha, we're just having fun, blah blah. And then Steven, Steven, bless his heart, <laughs> Steven kind of said something to kind of get in on the conversation. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, and um, blah blah blah, right? And we all go, It was just interesting, just kind of that void without him. You guys will feel it as, as you're watching. I mean, obviously, you will still see Steven, but it's just, um, it, it's very, the writers are very, very, very smart. Very good writing on the show, and I, I think all of this starts with the writing. I mean, the, we, we do what we do as actors, but we can't do any of it without the writing. So I, my hat's go off to you. Yeah. You said, I'm sorry, I have one question. You said fragmented team arrow is Dick going to get a I know. They were just, now that's 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 interesting because um, I did. You know, he's gonna get something. I mean, Dingo can't really be out in the field. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny because we'll, we'll be we'll be shooting something, right? And and Steven will come clad in green leather. And he runs behind the warehouse with his bow and arrow. And he's like, Yeah, we have to find the killers. <laughs> and then Colton, and Colton comes up behind him, clad in red leather. He's like, Yeah, we gotta find the boss. <laughs> Come up, right? In a hoodie. I got a bomber jacket on, right? With a clock, like, yeah! Let's kill somebody! They will know who I am, but let's kill them anyway. It's horrible. So, um, you know, I think there's like, there's, there's like some, um, there's some groundswell on, on Twitter, like, Hashtag Diggle gets a mask. Or just uh, anything like keep sending that stuff in, uh, and they will answer. So I, I talked. I talked to uh, Greg kind of uh, and kind of briefly about that. So yeah, you'll be seeing some. So. Yes, please. I took your question. So go ahead. I did. I'm sorry. Well, yes, I have bought the, the fuck cancer shirt. Sure, have the cancer shirt. Um, wonderful cause. Thank you all for supporting it. Uh, it's fantastic. Yes, your question. Your first part of your question was what? What was that first part of the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that. Yes, that. There's another story. <laughs> Andrew Kreisberg was. One of the executive producers and, and writers of The Flash and Arrow. He's uh, really working very hard on The Flash right now because he's you know, just getting off the ground. He was on set that day. They were shot that scene. And um, it's written that, you know, Diggle loses his cool. That's pretty much how it was written when he sees The Flash and how quickly he moves. Uh, and so, so Andrew said, well, just, you, just go for it. I said, fine. And, and before they said action, I said, Andrew, how big can I go? And he said, the Zach was said, he said, it's the flash. You can be as big as you want. What you saw when he goes like, 
was the third take because like the first and second take, everybody lost it. I mean, everybody <laughs> behind the camera, they just howled laughing. So it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Anytime you get to see Diggle kind of have fun, it's kind of interesting because Diggle is so, you know, so by the book, so kind of pooting a little bit. Um, so it's always nice. And, and, and the second part of the episode, the second part of that uh, crossover, our, our part when he gets to propose to Lila is very sweet. Anytime you get to see Diggle that way, kind of sweet and funny, it's, uh, it's always a nice treat because he's, he's so by the book and stalwart. Hey. So do I. <laughs> do I owe you any money? <laughs> ah! <laughs> I know. I know. You know what's funny? We, we had there. There was a, uh, a LA premiere of uh, the crossover episode. And we had like a panel like this, and there were people that came up to the mics to ask questions, and they were like, the one dude came up, and he was like, hey, Felicity, and she was like, yes. And, um, or Emily, and she was like, yes. And he said, uh, are you single? And she was like, yes, I am. And this is exactly what he did. He was like, oh. <laughs> like, this is your chance, man. What are you doing? You can see it online, it's, it's hilarious. He just walks away, like, like she just told him, yes, I'm married or something. Like, no, um, can I put in a good word? No. But she'll see this on YouTube, so. Hey. Has Red Arrow appeared on the show? Yeah. Well, that's a question. Yes, Colton Haynes uh, plays Red Arrow slash Arsenal. Hilarious, hilarious, and plays it very well. Um, but like most characters on the show, um, Roy Harper isn't exactly uh, the way he's written in the comic book. I think he's a heroin addict, or was, or something like that in the comic book. Not exactly a drug addict. <laughs> Though he was injected with a drug last season, uh, Mirakuru, um, which is uh, Japanese for makes you strong as hell. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but we got him cured from that. I'm just, I'm just, just running down the whole show for you. And, uh, and now he's just an expert uh, kick butter, uh, street fighter slash archer. He's been trained uh, by Oliver Queen. Oliver Queen, who's Arrow, who's the lead of the show, by the way. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. I know, you love that one. <laughs> All the way in the back, the same shirt. So, uh, Manu, Manu was over here in Phoenix Comic Con, and someone uh, was asking about the Sand Ladder. He pretty much said that you were, you were the champion of that. I was wondering if you share a comment. That what he said? <laughs> I'll pay a new later on for saying that. <laughs> um, you know, the Sam Ladder, I don't know if I'm a champion. I don't, I don't know about that. <clears throat> What's interesting about this season is that I don't think anyone's a champion of the Sam Ladder this season. I don't, I don't know, you got, probably, guys can probably count on one hand how many times you've seen Steven and any of us with our shirts off this season. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah. Really? I mean, it's, it's a lot less this season, isn't it? Not baby girl. <laughs> no, baby girl, that's by design. <laughs> because... That's hard! You know how hard it is to keep an eight pack? Really, like a six pack, even a four pack. Do you know how, do you know how hard that is? No, that's really, it's really difficult. So, I, so the Sam Ladder, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'm champion of it. The, the Sam Ladder really, if you can do a, if you can do a pull up, honestly, if you can do like maybe two or three pull ups, you can do Sam Ladder. It, it's, it's about technique, you gotta swing, pull up, swing, pull up, swing. So, um, but, you know, we, we haven't been doing the whole shirt off a whole lot this season because it's, it's, it's just, it's been a tiring season. But don't worry, season four is coming, second half of season three is coming, we'll take it all. Oh, it's so hard to please your people. Yes, right here. Are you married? <laughs> yes, I'm married. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, over here in the green shirt. Thank you. 
they actually say that online? Yeah. How do you guys get this stuff? <laughs> There's a mole. There's a mole. Yes, yes, uh, you'll see more of my little In the Supermax Argus situation. Um, that's a very good storyline in terms of how, how, how we get more of that as well. And John Barrowman, wow. Don't you love him? He's the greatest ever. He keeps us laughing all the time. Yeah, you'll see um, John Barrowman. John, what's interesting about John's character, uh, Dark Archer slash Malcolm Merlin, it's also it's awesome about him, awesome about him, it's also awesome that John's kind of playing him this way, is that, you know, he has that Joker thing in, in the sense that he really feels as if he's doing the right thing, like this, he's compelled to do this, and it's, it's not, uh, there, there's a, there's kind of, there's a righteous ending in his mind, right? This is a, he's doing this stuff for righteous reasons. So it's, it's just great. But John is just, he just cracks us up on set. You know, it's, it's amazing, first of all, that me and Steven get any work done. At all, ever, ever, ever in life. We just, we make fart noises, and we just, we're always cracking each other up, and, and John Barrowman does not help. He takes it to a completely, totally new level. So when John Barrowman, me, Steven, and Colton are in the foundry, it's, time to play. I mean, we just we just barely get any work done. And the blooper reel, I mean, th this this year's blooper reel, when you get the end of season three DVD, when that finally happens, I, I think it's gonna be probably as long as an hour ep as an episode. <laughs> because every other team is like, cut! All right, can we straighten up, guys? Can we straighten up? <laughs> We're just laughing all the time. It's, it's great, it's awesome. You didn't ask that question, but I just thought I'd tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, these are she's sweet. Um, well, you know, you know what's interesting about that whole thing is that you know Diggle, Diggle is Oliver three years later, right? He, he's he's already had his uh, his crucible. I always say that his Afghanistan was his crucible, you know, and and Oliver has yet to uh, fully adjust to his crucible, which was the island. So ultimately, that will be Oliver, right? Ultimately, hopefully, he will be who Diggle is, a, a guy who's, who's uh, okay with fighting crime and putting his life on the line and has a wife and a job. That's, that's ultimate. I mean, did you see the look on Oliver's face that, that when, when he came to the hospital and baby Sarah was born and he was just like... I know, that was all Stephen face, right? He was just like, I want that, I want that. You know, so um, ultimately, that's where, that's where that character is going in. You know, if everything works out, I guess it'll be with them. Yes, it is. It's over this side. Here, on the front. Person down in the back. Yep. Pointing at you. Right there. Hey. Oh, thank you. Well, it's interesting. My, my son is four years old. Right? So it, I'm, it's, it's still, fatherhood's still new for me. Stephen has a wonderful... 15 month old, Mavi was all at this point. And um, so, how do I feel playing uh, Father on, on television? It's great. I just think Diggle's a, a great role. D Diggle says the stuff that you guys are thinking, I think, <laughs> which, which we always try to do. You know what I mean? Like, this man runs 600 miles an hour. Like, what does that do when you, find, when you look at that for the first time? Right? So, it's just, Diggle has a reaction, I think, that people that are watching the show has. And um, and he's probably he's probably the the most fully adjusted character on the show. You know, just in terms of he has a family, he fights crime, he's well adjusted. And um, so he's a great character. He's just a great, great character. For, even for television, I think he's just a great character. And what's great about him is that he, he doesn't have the cannon to lean back on to say, you know, what I don't get a lot, unlike Steven, a lot of other characters that this isn't in the New 52. <laughs> because he's not in the New 52, or in any, you know, in, in the, he's now in the Green Arrow universe, but he wasn't before, so there isn't any canon to kind of rely on in the creation of Diggle. So it's just great to kind of um, make this together with the writers. Captain America shirt. Captain America shirt.
John Berman. Let me, let me, let me, I'm trying to get this scene because I know I have an answer for that. <clears throat> there was this moment where, the, and, the, and anybody who's on a film set, I mean, you guys, everyone knows how to shoot now. If me and you have this scene, right? The camera's behind you, over your shoulder, looking at me so it sees a piece of you, but they don't see your face, they see me. So in this particular scene, it's me and Steven. You're John Barrowman, right? So you, you're giving us your lines, okay? <clears throat> and we have to act. Right? But they don't see your face. Okay, so you got the picture. That's the way it is right now. So I'm on camera, Steve is right here, and John is looking at us, camera's behind him. So I don't know what the line is. John has to say something like, I don't know, I'm going to the store for milk. And I wasn't the line, but let's just say that's the line. This is John Barrow. This is me and me and Steven are looking at John, and we're like, we're doing our brooding stuff, right? Because I'm Diggle, he's he's Oliver, and we're like, mm, right? So John Barrowman. John Barrowman says, I have to go to the store and get some milk. But this is what he does. He does. I have to go to the store and get some cheese. Oh, fuck that bitch. <laughs> and me and Steven have to stay, like, in the moment. So we're like this. John Barrowman is one of the funniest men I've ever worked with before in my life. And um, he doesn't help me and Steven at all. <laughs> On our coverage, he doesn't help. He just lets us have it. And, uh, you know, so that's our John Barrowman story. He's, he's a very, very funny, funny man. Yeah. Over right here in the red shirt. Hey. Yeah, you know, I would do American Ninja, but I, I have to probably shed a few pounds because American Ninja, it, it works when you don't have as much muscle on, I think. I mean, not that I'm that muscle at all. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I, 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 I would train for it. I mean, obviously, I would train for it. But um, yes, I would do it. I love American Ninja. I would do it. Yeah, in a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. You and Steven could do it too. We could do it. Yeah, yeah. Steven's very competitive. I love Steven. He's incredibly, incredibly competitive. There's a scene where me, him, uh, him and Katie Lotz have our, our, we're practically naked in a scene last season, and we're fighting with bamboo sticks, right, and staffs, and, um, and I, I, take off, I take off my shirt, take off my pants, and Katie Lotz is like, oh my God, David, look at your calves, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Steve is like, put on some pants, David. <laughs> Yeah, don't be mad because mine bigger than yours. Is that why he's always posting about don't, don't skip leg day? Yeah, exactly. We always say that. We're always like, don't skip leg day. Don't skip leg day. All right. This person right over here? Beginning with, let's see, um, Colton Haynes. We're all, we're, now let's give ourselves a line. The line will be, I have to go to the store and get some milk. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We've been doing that all night, so let's stick with that. So, Colton Haynes, I have to go to the store and get some milk. Here's Colton Haynes. I will, me personally, as a fan, man, mention Metropolis, mention Gotham. I mean, it's like the two biggest cities in D.C., right? So, um, and, and, but, you know, the stuff with D.C., I mean, every time they, they have to get permission for every single thing they do, and, and thank God we, we do have a lot of characters we can play with. But as a fan, yes, I would love to see Bruce Wayne. Right. 
That's right. That's right. There is. There is. So it's and so we'll see. I mean, and, and I think I don't know if it was in the original. In this, there was some mention of a pilot or something going on in Flash, and there's some kind of hint about Hal Jordan or something like that. There's some type of pilot stuff. So I mean, we'll see. But you know, it, it's it's funny because we just you think we have access to all the characters, even even Harley Quinn, right? They, we, you only saw in the Suicide Squad kind of part of her shoulder and part of her back, you heard her voice. And I think maybe, you may not have seen that much of her, I think, but you heard her voice. And that's because, you know, they are kind of saving her for Suicide Squad and there you go. Uh, the Suicide Squad, the movie, yeah. Thank you. In the video, yeah. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. In answer to your question, yes. I think I think Diggle always wants to do that to Oliver. Right? I think Diggle's the guy sometimes who's like, I can't believe I'm risking my life for this video. Sometimes I think he actually does think that way. But, uh, and we're going to get into this a little, a little later, but also some of uh, Diggle's, um, like why he's so stuck on Oliver, like why he fell in love with this kid. I, I think that um, it's, it's, he's the brother that he couldn't save, Andy. And we'll get into this Andy Diggle's with, um, with Deadshot and Hive and Suicide Squad, so the second part of the season and into season four. That um, Andy was the, was the brother he couldn't save and Oliver is the brother he can save. And that's, that's really the attachment, that's really the attachment that he has to Oliver. He's the brother he can save. Striped shirt over here. Yeah. Uh, big. Suic there's a big Suicide Squad episode coming out. At least one, maybe even two. This uh, upcoming uh, second half of the season, and then Hive, uh, the fourth season. So yeah, there's there's um, there's some Suicide Squad stuff coming. We're not done. Deadshot. Michael Rowe did such a great job with Deadshot. And, um, and the relationship between him and Diggle, which, again, like Felicity, no one really expected that to kind of morph into what it became. So, um, so yes, you'll be seeing a lot more of Suicide Squad. But there's also the movie coming out, so, you know, there's, there's only, you know, again, there's only so much I think that we can do. So right back. Yeah, well, um, let's see, Dexter was, was incredible. Uh, Michael C. Hall is probably one of the best actors in, ever in life. And he's, he, what was funny about that though, is that, the, <laughs> yes, I do have a story. Uh, <laughs> the first day on set, I'm in bed with Deborah Morgan, right? We're, we're, we're in bed together. And this is also the first day I meet Michael C. Hall. And this is right before he and Jennifer get married. And so it's, this is literally it. It's like, there's Video Village where the director and, and uh, uh, producers or whatnot, they sit behind the monitors watching what's being shot. That's called Video Village. And so when I come in, Jennifer's already kind of there, kind of waiting, and I, you know, I've met her before. And uh, Mike was kind of near Video Village, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? Big fan, blah, blah, blah. He's like, welcome to the show, great. So he goes behind Video Village, and then I get in the bed with his, to be wife, uh, girlfriend at the time, and it's just like, I kind of see him out of the corner of my eye looking at the monitor like, and I gotta like spooch with his girlfriend. So it was, it was a little awkward in that respect, but uh, you know, it, it turned out great. It was, it was a great role and, and just a, a great time. I'm not quite sure how happy I was with the finale. But, what, but then again, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do with that guy? You, you, you either kill him, you put him in jail, I mean, what do you do? So, um, I, I, I don't know, it, it, was, it, was, it was just tough to end that. I think that was a show that was tough to end and make everyone happy, period, because what do you do? So, if, if you want to see Dexter again, you keep him alive, and he just, his dark passenger will always be with him, and it, and it excludes everyone else in his life. So, I, 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 I applaud that choice. It was a daring choice, but um, obviously it didn't make everyone happy. Mm -hmm. um, my question is uh, Oliver Queen seems to have a pity party all the time. Yeah. Like everything's always, you know, everything's I know. Wow, wow, wow. Um, <laughs> oh, me. 
Bonnie, the island. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't know. I find it hard to watch sometimes, but yeah. what did you laugh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do as your characters to make them happy? What would make Oliver Queen happy so he would be so sad? So sad. Well, I think for Diggle, he would be like, get with Felicity, homie. <laughs> I think Diggle is like, yes, I, Diggle's always been about you have to get your humanity, right? You can't, you can't go around killing people, Oliver, it scrapes a part of your soul off, um, give up Felicity because you love her, and, but I think the thing about Felicity, I think the reason why he wants them together is because Diggle has always tried to push Oliver into being, um, being more in touch with his humanity, and he is truly, honestly in love with Felicity. So I, I think, uh, unlike the other 578 women that he slept with, he's always <laughs> I, I always laugh about that. I'm like, Felicity, I know you love Oliver, but didn't you see all these women he slept with? <laughs> that, would, that would be me being Diggle. But <laughs> Diggle, um, I, I think Diggle, uh, in terms of what he would want to make Oliver happy, I, I think he would want Oliver to embrace his humanity, and I think a big part of that would be embracing the relationship that he could potentially have with Felicity. Yeah. Hand up here with the That is a very good question and very softly asked. Um, she asked, do I think that Thea will join Team Arrow now that uh, she's been trained by her daddy? Um, there's a big storyline coming from Thea. I mean, you guys are about to flip out on in terms about of to? what's going on with Thea and, you know, Daddy Merlin. And um, so I, I, can, I can only say in, in answer to your question, um, I can't really answer that. <laughs> uh, this is a really good question. I can't really answer that, but Stay tuned for, for the revelation of uh, what's going on with Dia and, and her daddy. It's, it's going to be big. This gentleman who is Groot. There you are. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, as far as I know, um, he doesn't lose his arm. As far as I know, but maybe he does. Huh? That's a great producer question. Um, and then, you know, and stuff changes. Like the stuff that they, they start off, the writers really start off with big themes, and things kind of get filled in within those themes, and that's really a, a, a more of a writer, uh, producer question. I don't think that he loses an arm, but maybe he will. Am I John Stewart? I don't know, man. That's what I'm saying. Write in, tell him. Yes, John Diggle's John Stewart, and then maybe it'll happen. Who knows? But as far as right now, and listen, they've gone at great lengths to to really like dig John Diggle into the lexicon. And um, I don't know if they're ready to give that up yet, but, but who knows? I know, I want the power ring too, man. <laughs> but you know what, then it becomes a different show, right? Because it's gonna be like, we're a crew of soldiers, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, just construct a brick wall. <laughs> Get through that, mirror crews. <laughs> So, I, you know, it becomes, but, you know, maybe, maybe who knows? You know, but I, I can't tell you this, and because it's, it's uh, they've said this publicly, uh, they do want to kind of do the, that the crossover thing. That They want that to be a thing. You know what I mean? They, they want to do that more often. It was really, really successful. And um, so, if he is Jon Stewart, he can perhaps exist in that universe, because that universe does exist over in uh, Central City. That's a great one. Yeah, because they're in the crossover, you know what that was all about. Yeah. Yeah, that was baby daddy or baby mama, right? She was there. Um, Connor Hawk, another producer question. But I would imagine somewhere in 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 the run of this show, Connor Hawk has to show up someplace. I would he would have to, I would think. 
And the, what the producers tend to do is kind of lay these ladies' eggs, and they, they're not hatched for like six months or you know, 12 episodes down the, down the line. So they put that there for a reason. I would think that Connor Hawk, there's a future to Connor Hawk someplace. I'm not quite sure what yet, because that's, that's really uh, their department. But I would think so. Yes, yes. Well, I appreciate you listening back then. No, um, <laughs> yes, more crossovers will be seen. Yes. Um, uh, I don't know when. You know, just logistically, it was a bit of a bit of a. Uh, I wouldn't say a nightmare, but it was just there. There were some challenges logistically, uh, just in terms of scheduling, because we really were kind of shooting two shows at one time, which is kind of, it's just tough to do that. And uh, but they're working the kinks out. And uh, they've said publicly, that I've been told that, you know, they want to do more of these crossovers. It was big. It was big news. It was fans. You guys loved it, so it was great. They're going to do more. Yeah. Over here. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, obviously you're saying they want to do more crossovers. So yeah. Like Wouldn't that be great? Well, see, that's the thing, right? You guys tell them you want John Stewart. They make a John Stewart show. Boom. Flash is successful. Boom. Green Arrow is successful. Boom. They spin off and make a Birds of Prey. Who knows? Justice League. Hello. So I don't know. I mean, they, I, I don't know exactly what they're thinking, precisely what they're thinking, but um, Supergirl is is uh, possibly going to be happening. Um, another great plan to show. And I would think. You know, I don't know if they said this publicly or not, but I would think that if everything is happy and everyone's successful, that they cross over all this stuff. So, will they do a Justice League television show? I but I, but I can tell you this: if you have these franchises that are successful and the crossovers work, I can't see any reason why they wouldn't. Yeah. I know, young, young Teen Titans are uh, talking about Night, Night Wing. Yeah, all that stuff was. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's the, it's amazing that anything gets made, and because it's, there's so much bureaucracy in red tape. But and but it's fantastic. It's wonderful. But it's just the stuff you hear. You it may never ever come to fruition, or it might happen in a month. You know, you just never. Know. Just all the way back. Yeah, Sin, yeah, she's, um, you will see more of Sin, uh, because Sin's going to have a very specific reaction to the person who is not Canary, but looks like Canary, but not Canary. And um, so, yeah, she will, she will have some very specific things to say about that. So, yeah, she'll be back for sure. Sin will be back. Over here, we're kind of neglecting this side over here. It's person who Supergirl, right? <laughs> if you think fries flew in the air, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know what he would react to. See, it depends on the outfit. <laughs> is it is it the Supergirl in the skirt outfit, or is it like the new Supergirl? I don't know. Um, that that's a great question. I, I don't know what John Diddle's reaction would be. I know he would just flip out. I know that. He would flip out for sure. Yep. Wouldn't that be awesome? I, I think that's, you know, they listen to you. You think you guys don't really, and maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know, but you guys really do have a lot of power. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> no, really, right in, right? They listen, tweet, all that stuff. Social media is very powerful. And uh, let them know what you think because they, they, they really do listen to you. The, the, the chemistry between Oliver and uh, Felicity is, is, is really, really incredible. As, as, you know, you can, you can cut it on screen. But you guys have a lot to do with that. You know, you guys, not the chemistry, but you guys have a lot to do with what they want to see happen in that relationship and why they're writing, writing to that. Greg Berlanti actually said that at Comic Con that you guys have a lot to do with that. So that is a great suggestion. Right in the top.
The hardest on the show physically was um, was probably my Suicide Squad episode. Was just just me just having an episode by myself, and then there was another one where I doing some stuff in Afghanistan. Um, the episode where he had the flashbacks of the episode. that was probably the phys physically the hardest. I lost my voice. I remember Stephen actually coming back to set, and he was like, "So how's it feel to be the star of the episode?" And I'm like, "I do not envy you at all." <laughs> and um, so that was tough. And pranks, you know something, we're so stupid on the show, we don't even play pranks, we just make dumb sounds. I mean, we just do stupid, we just, yep. we just do, you know, this, this is me and Steve, this is me and Steve. I'll, I'll be on, I'll be on the, sh the set and just, we'll be there and it'll be quiet and I'll go, Terminator 2, T2, right? That's what it is. We just do stupid stuff like that, we just make dumb, dumb sounds and we just, for all you guys who don't know what that is, that's like the major thing, the major sound. See, I told you it was stupid. I told you it was stupid. I mean, well, that's that's how dumb we are on set. Like, that's actually funny on set. That's how boring it is on set. Now, that's funny. It didn't work with this crowd because we're really tough and jaded, but it works in the comedy. You didn't have the cadence just right for that crowd. I guess. You have failed this city. Yeah. Right. You know, Steven thought I was a guest star. <laughs> it's the truth. Steven didn't know I was a regular. And uh, it was funny. First time I met Steven, this is exactly what Steven said. Steven did this. He was like, you're tall. I'm like, yeah, how you doing? And um, it, you know, the pilot, the pilot, it, the pilot was so uh, stressful, really. Because Arrow, nothing like Arrow had had been done. You know what I mean? Like we, they were really kind of going off of off of uh, the the energy of the Dark Knight series and what Nolan had kind of done in the movies and that brooding dark thing. And we really had to get over the Smallville hype. A small mill hump, really, because um, you know people were comparing the show to Smallville, and Smallville was a completely different show, completely different tone, everything. And we were going for something that really hadn't been done on television, uh, at least not that with, in that way with the combo character. And um, Stephen was under a lot of pressure. I mean, even even you know he handled it incredibly to his great credit, but but there was a lot of pressure on him, you know, and and everyone kind of felt it. And um, so, so it, immediately there was just kind of, he was in complete and total, just Oliver mode. He was finding the guy, right? And he was shredded. I mean, like, when you see like, season one, Stephen Mel, it's just like, did you eat at all? Like, he just lived at the gym. He just, and, um, and, and even though not, and now he's still shredded, but just then, just visually, he was just like, just diesel. And uh, so between that and just kind of politically what he had to deal with, there was just not a lot of, there was just wasn't really a whole lot of stuff going on with him and, and, other, and other people. But as soon as the season started, there was a bit of just a, and a certain amount of relaxation because we were on the air, and immediately we just jumped into it. This is, Stephen, Stephen tells his story, I don't know if he says it publicly or not. But, but this is what won Steven over to me. And it wasn't really a winning over, because there, there was never a contentious relationship ever at all between me and Steven. Not gonna and it was fantastic. But there was a scene where he's in the Queen Mansion, and uh, he's sitting down, and there's some other people in front of him. I'm playing John Diggle, the bodyguard at that time, slash chauffeur, slash bike driver. And, <laughs> and the camera's on him, so it's his close-up. 
So all I have to do is walk in frames, say something to him, and leave. That's all I have to do. The, now, what I'm supposed to say is, Mr. Queen, your car is ready. Right, that's what I'm supposed to say. But instead, <laughs> I bend over, I go to his ear, and I say, Mr. Queen, I have very large, hairy blank. <laughs> <laughs> And Steven is just like... <laughs> and from that day forward, you can tweet him, ask him, he'll tell you it's the absolute truth. From that day forward, it's been nothing but the most beautiful, wonderful relationship between us. I think that he doesn't get to, he doesn't get to do uh, as, as much as I think he's just a great actor. Paul Blackburn's a great actor, but I just I, yeah he's just a really good actor. I think that that um, that character can become something where you just go okay already, you know what I mean? But he just plays it so well. I think I would do I think I would want to be him because he just has so much range, right? He just he's he's heartbroken. He's he was a guy who was chasing the vigilante, now he's teamed up with the vigilante. Um, he lost his daughter, he wants to marry the wife that he lost. I mean, just a lot of grit that that, that character has, you know. And um, so if I, if I played any, anything, I'd probably, I'd probably want to do Captain Lance because he, you can sink, as an actor, you can sink your teeth into that character. Okay, we have about five minutes, so we have time for just a few more questions. So, do we have, oh, over there, okay, he says go over there. Which, the which arm? Over. Which arm? Yeah. Okay, the one with the black sleeve. <laughs> the, uh, the audition process. Um, well, it, it was fortunate for me because I, I went into what is called as an actor a friendly room. And a friendly room, a, an unfriendly room, is a room like this one. <laughs> <laughs> This is a friendly room. This is wonderful. So an unfriendly room is a room where an actor walks in and there's a producer or director and they don't really know who you are and you're really coming in and, try and showing them, like, no, you need to know me, right? So you have to make believers out of it. A friendly room is a room where you really have the role and they want you to be there. And this is really a formality that like you have to kind of go in and meet the people and and they know all your work, they made calls already, you're one of two other people that they're considering. And, and, um, and they want you to be incredible. So that's a friendly room. So when I walked in, um, I met with uh, our director, and Andrew Christberg, and um, they were basically like, you know, you know who this guy is, and uh, let's see what you got. And we did it, and you know, I think a week later, that was it. So it was, because Greg Berlanti kind of wanted me for the role that meant a whole lot, so it was it wasn't a very difficult process for me at all. But for someone like Emily, Emily went up against whoever she went up against, and um, for a guest star role, she was a local hire, Vancouver local hire, and uh, she just they she made believers out of everyone, and um, and thus Felicity was born, you know. Yeah. All right, last question. There was somebody there. You are the young man with the. There you go. Yeah, that, that's a good question as well. Will we see the Adam and Will costume this season? Um, and that's really a producer question. They're, they're, they're toying with that. I, I will say this though, that by the end of the season, there will be at least three legitimate heroes that can protect Starling City besides Oliver Queen. So um, you'll, you'll see, they, they're really building that up, that, 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 that the city, um, can, can live outside of Oliver Queen. That's a big part of the second season, like second uh, part of the season. We are excited. Can't wait for that yep. next part. Thank you. Thank so you guys. Much.